uh, network and security destination region, this region in which the replica will be launched. So you have all the regions. So this is the region we were talking about earlier at the start of the call. Uh, you have Africa, Cape Town, EU West, EU uh, Frankfurt, EU North, you know, these different regions. So again, if you are, uh, if you are uh, to serve customers, let's say in Asia Pac, right, then you may want to probably select a, uh, a certain, a, 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 a region closer to that so that the, the replica is serving all of the customers requirements from that region, right? So uh, let me just go back and maybe pick central. Okay, uh, destination DB subnet group, again, private and public subnet. So you can probably default to whatever the security uh, subnet group you want to. Availability zone, where do you want to uh, start this uh, this uh, this database replica? You can you have the option of different uh, availability zones, uh, and also of course your regions. Uh, publicly accessible DB instance, EC instance will uh, and device outside of the VPC hosting the DB instance will connect the DB instances. You must also select one or more VPC security group that specify which EC2 instance and devices can connect. So again, now if you want to uh, have your database access from uh, outside, you may want to probably select that option, and then you have to make sure that the, this is also catered in your uh, security group, right? If the security group is tighter, then this is not going to work. So you have to make sure that uh, it's uh, thought about something that you have to consider is your security group and your uh, uh, allowing this publicly accessible kind of uh, matches. And I, I don't know a good reason of allowing the uh, database to be accessible from outside. Uh, if you even want to have people connect to your database, then you may want to probably create a jump box or a maybe tunneling uh, so that they connect through that and then connect to the database. Directly connecting to the database may not be a good option, but again, it depends on your need. Uh, no DB instance will not have a public IP address assigned, no EC2 instance or devices outside of VPC will be able to connect. Uh, security group, so again, you can have a default security group or a security group that you, uh, if you want to specify with a certain properties, you can select the one that uh, you just created. Encryption, so if you want to encrypt the database, uh, this is the account uh read replica source this is the source so i have this just one database running in this region that's why uh i have selected db2 database 2 uh db instance identifier this is the unique key that identifies db instance so you can say db replica dash one okay and this is the port okay and enable hence monitoring so how much time i got about 10 minutes uh, auditing, if you want to allow some auditing, slow query log, it's always a good idea to have that. Uh, maybe general and error logs. Auditing, I think it's maybe too much. Again, it depends on your need. You can uh, allow that. Performance insight, enable performance insight. Uh, this is where it's going to keep the, the, uh, your insights or data for that many days. So if you want to keep this data for se seven days or a year, two years, depending on your need, you can actually specify that. Uh, or you can disable your uh, performance insight. Maintenance uh, auto minor version update specified that DB instance should receive an automatic engine version update. Now, if somebody, right, if, they, if this is a, a MySQL database uh, engine, which is running right behind the scene, then uh, if you want to actually receive those updates, then you may want to probably say yes. So automatically AWS will take the responsibility and update. If you don't want that, then you can select no. Now click on create and read replica. So this is gonna go ahead and actually create a read replica. So um, once that is done, it's gonna go ahead and come back here and uh, show us the, the read replica done. So for example, right here, it is uh, creating. Okay, so uh, we have created one uh, Redshift uh, environment over here. So you can see there is one uh, cluster that is available. If I click on it, this is the, uh, the database, right? It has already taken uh, the, the Redshift. It has taken 19 snapshots uh, since the beginning of this uh, redshift. Um, this allows you to actually go and 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 uh, start, you know, uh, uh, hosting the data, right? That is coming from different sources. Uh, if you want to run the queries, then you can go click on the queries, and then you can start writing the queries over here, right? Uh, there is the editor. Sorry. So if you want to start connecting to this database, right? So you need to actually go and click on the uh, editor, create new connection. Uh, this is the data, uh, the cluster that you want to uh, collect. 
uh, that you want to actually connect to, the name of this database, the user and the password. Uh, I don't really have that information here, but if you want to actually connect to this data warehouse, then you can and run the queries on this database, you can go ahead and, um, and uh, you can click on, 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 on the database and provide the information and then uh, start running the queries off of this. Let me just go here. Clusters and there you go. So let's look at the uh, some of the properties over here. So query monitoring. Uh, this allows you to see the query history, database performances. So you can, if you want to see how well your data warehouse is doing, it gives you a, a wait, commit, and execution times for the database's workload, concurrency, queued versus running queries. So it gives you a lot of good data that you want to uh, you want to monitor uh, based on your data warehouse. Um, I want to actually go one more place. Let's see if I can find it. Okay, so this one does not have it. We created the cluster here. Okay, I think that's the only place we have created the cluster of the data warehouse. Yeah, I think um, I think Oregon is the only place where we have created the cluster. I thought we have created multiple clusters, but I think uh, we have created only um, uh, one cluster here in Oregon. Uh, let me quickly go uh, to Quick Site, which is the again the BI tool. Uh, here we go. So if you remember my diagram, right? So um, we have the data warehouse, which is taking in all the data, and on top of that, we have the uh, we have the business intelligence tool. Um, so this is the uh, the BI tool that we are using. Uh, here you can go ahead and if I go to the dashboard, so you can go ahead and start, you know, uh, pulling in all of the data from your red, uh, Redshift data warehouse and you can start, you know, um, uh, write your data queries and then start, you know, charting it. Uh, different types of graphs are available within this uh, quick site uh, tool. It's a very nifty tool. And uh, if you, uh, if you have time, I would highly recommend you should go ahead and start looking into it. Um, this allows you, for example, here, it allows you to uh, create different reports in different visual types. For example, you have pie charts, <clears throat> You have pie charts, you have bar graphs, you have uh, Excel spreadsheet exports as well. Um, so all, all that kind of stuff is actually available here. You give this to your business users, right? So because what you have done, you have actually ported all of the data to the data warehouse, which is connected to your quick site, right? Now quick site is basically, um, uh, it allows you allows you to give access to your business users who can run the report right here. So again, the data coming from here goes into the data warehouse. And again, you have giving access to your business users to use the BI tool, which they run. Now, um, uh, you may want to probably um, uh, come up with some canned reports with some specific data uh, by drag and drop. But, but the thing is that, you know, not necessarily all of the, uh, not, not all of the report that you will uh, create uh, for your business users will be actually uh, used or, by, or are actually needed by the business users, right? So they will always come up with uh, maybe something that is, uh, that is needed uh, differently. So if you give this tool, they can go ahead and create the report uh, themselves. You don't have to worry about it. For example, let me just, uh, is the latest here. Okay, so deleted. Okay, so we have to probably create. Ah, uh, okay, I have to create the uh, spice uh, information, I think. So that's why. 